of revival that is in this place. I sense that God is here to help us and to strengthen us. How many came to give God praise and glory in the house? That's what He is worthy of. He's worthy of our worship. And uh, I'll say this, I was reading recently in Psalm chapter 47. Uh, uh, This is not the message tonight, but I feel like sharing this. That's become one of my favorite psalms of late. Psalm 47, Bible scholars say that it is an acrostic or an acronym. Of course, us English speakers and readers, we don't recognize that. There's just nine little verses in that chapter. But they say if you go back and you would read it in the original Hebrew language, the first letter of each verse spells out, a phrase or a sentence, and here's what it says, rip apart the devil, amen, or tear up Satan. Boy, I don't know about you, but that sounds good to me tonight. That sounds like something I'd like to do right now in this revival. You know, if we'll be honest, it seems like uh, everywhere we look in this world today, the opposite is happening And I don't want to bring doom and gloom in here, but we look around, the devil's tearing up lives, tearing up homes, tearing up nations, tearing up churches even. How many believe it's time we turn the table on the enemy? Time we take authority over him. But I begin to wonder, a while back when I discovered this truth, I began to wonder how, pastor, do we turn the table? How do we rip apart the plans and the programs of the enemy. And so I made up my mind. I was going to do a deep study on Psalm 47. I mean, if the, tr- if the acrostic is there, then the truth must be there. And I thought I'm going to, you know, I got my pen and paper out. I'm going to search every word, look up every word in the Hebrew. But it didn't take that long to find it. I didn't even have to get past verse 1, Psalm 47 and verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Five times in those nine verses, it said sing praises, sing praises. Are you getting it tonight like he's driving it home? Sing praises. How many is glad we got a weapon that still works in this battle? We're not down here defenseless against the devil in this battle. We've got some weapons of mass destruction on our side. And I'll tell you what one of them is. It's Pentecostal praise. It's worship that's done from the heart and the spirit of holiness. How many want to get that weapon out and fight the devil tonight? I'd like to get that weapon out and put the enemy on the run. I believe we can. Amen. I've said it a lot. When praise goes up, God shows up. And I want God to show up. God inhabits the praises. And the Bible said of Israel, we say of his people, amen. How many believe if we worship him, he'll come close to us tonight? Amen. I feel him here, and I don't want to quit giving him the glory. I want him to come closer. You said he passed by. And that brought revival. I'd like him to pass by and get close enough to touch us tonight. Amen. I feel him in this house. Revelation chapter number 1. If you have your Bibles, let's go there together tonight. Revelation chapter number 1. That's where I feel the Lord pointing me and directing me. Revelation chapter 1. God gave this to me two or three days ago uh, for this revival. So I'm not going to say it's hot off the press. It's off the press I need the Holy Ghost to make it hot, make it on fire. So I pray he'll come by, and I'm just going to give you the burden of my heart. Nothing fancy, nothing I've preached and tried uh, many times in revival. Just going to preach the burden of my heart. Revelation 1, while you're turning, let me take a moment. You can stand. I won't take too long, but I want to thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Broadway Assembly, for all your hospitality. Uh, the giving and the offering. May the Lord richly bless you for that. We don't take your sacrifice of giving lightly. We thank you for that. Thank you, Pastor Jones and your family and uh, Brother Cruz and his family and just everybody in the church have showed us so much hospitality. You don't have to go down south to find hospitality. You know that? My wife's from Columbus, Ohio. I heard her say amen. And we pastored in Ohio for uh, 12 and a half years. So there's some northern hospitality. And we appreciate the goodness of God's people. So thank you for letting us be here. I want to apologize and I covet your prayers. I've been battling with bronchitis.
this. I was preaching a couple youth camps this, a few weeks ago out in the open air, and it got cold at night, and uh, preaching, sweating, and I got this bronchitis. I'm just trying to preach through it. So I apologize if I seem winded or I'm laboring to kind of project it out there. But I pray tonight that the weakness of the messenger will not hinder the power of his message. How many believe God's got a message for his church? Amen. Revelation 1, if you got it, say amen. amen. Let's begin reading in verse number 9 tonight. Revelation 1 and verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, and I love this, it's in red letters in my Bible, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. How many know who that is speaking right there? Jesus Christ, he's the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and everything in between that the church needs, amen? And while you're standing, let me just grab verse 18, because I think it's powerful. Break this verse down. I am he that liveth. That's a declaration of deity right there. I am he that liveth and was dead, an explanation of Calvary, a declaration of deity, an explanation of Calvary, and he ended up with this, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hear those keys rattling, and I have the keys of hell and of death. That's a proclamation of victory. How many is glad for victory in Jesus tonight? It don't matter where you're at, what you're going through right now, if you got Christ, you got victory in the end. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. I want to draw your attention back to verse 9, verse 9 and 10. I want to compare these and contrast these. You've probably even noticed this sequence in the scripture. John said in verse 9, I was in the isle that is called Patmos. I'd have probably said it a little different. I'd have said I was on the island. I was trapped on an island. But John under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, said, I was in the aisle. And I think that's fitting. How many's ever been in something you wanted out of, huh? Hey, man, we say, I'm in trouble. Help. I'm in the trial of my life. I'm in this circumstance or situation. John was in the aisle. That is called Patmos. But I love verse 10. Everything changes. He said, I was in the Spirit. On the Lord's day. Amen. From in the aisle to in the spirit. Just like that. And you remember, I'm not going to read on for the sake of time, but when he got in the spirit, you read later in Revelation, he said he carried me away to a great and high mountain. He showed me that holy city, that new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And before long, before the story's over, John got off of Patmos, out of Patmos. Amen. I want to preach a few minutes tonight on the only way out is to get in. Amen. You understand what I mean? Sometimes the only way out of our trouble is to come to church and get in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands one more time tonight? Can we just pray together? Lift your voice. Let's pray in concert. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight, God. I thank you for your word. It is life. It is truth. Will you hide me behind the shadow of the cross tonight? Strengthen my body, God. I pray for that anointing that makes preaching more than a book report. Let it get in the heart of man tonight and let us leave here revived and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. and amen. The only way out is to get in. I, I read a great story once and I think it's fitting for what I want to try to preach tonight. It was about a woman 
by the name of Mary Slessor. Some of you might have read of her or recognized that name, Mary Slessor. She was born in Scotland back in 1848. And as a little girl, just 11 years old, God save little Mary Slessor. Amen. Started a work in her life. And not long after, at that same altar, God called her to the mission field. And little Mary Slessor was not shy about that. Everywhere she went, anybody that would listen pastor she would tell them I'm going to Africa someday I'm going to win souls for Jesus someday Uh, but there was a problem nobody believed her amen and the reason why she came from the wrong side of the tracks if you will her dad Robert Slesser was the worst drunk in town Uh, in fact everybody in her family tree they were all criminals and uh, uh, rebel rousers and alcoholics and when little Mary Slesser began to grow the devil began to torment her you know how he talks don't you and he would come and say you're going to end up just like them I'm going to get you you're never going to amount to anything you're going to be a drunkard you cannot overcome that habit and sin my I'm as glad to know the devil is a liar hallelujah I just insert this real quick. I was talking to a young man at youth camp a few weeks ago and he was troubled about generational curses uh, and he was telling me it runs in my family. Everybody in my family falls to this sin. Uh, everybody ends up this way. Uh, amen. I was able to tell him uh, when you got saved, uh, you got in a new family, uh, the family of God. Hallelujah. I love that Bible word regenerated you ever notice what's at the heart of that the root word of regenerated is gene amen we say it's in my DNA it's in my genes but thank God when I got washed by the blood of Calvary we got regene regenerated how many is glad old things are passed away and we're a new creature in Jesus Christ amen Praise God. Amen. But back to what I come to preach tonight. Mary Slesser dealt with that torment of the enemy. The devil kept talking to her, but she held on and grew. And the day came when she got ready to go to Africa and she went down to the harbor Brother Cruz and she was looking she didn't have the money to buy a ticket but she was looking for a way to Africa and she began to ask every captain is anybody going to Africa anybody will take me and she found a ship the SS Ethiopia and the captain said you can come with us but you got to get down in the cargo if you're going to ride for free you're going to ride in the cargo in the bottom of the ship and Mary Slesser 28 years old now climbed in in that ship and how many guess what the cargo was they were hauling barrels of whiskey alcohol all over for two weeks she had to ride alone and the devil made one more bid to derail her from her destiny but here's what I come to preach tonight Mary Slesser said I begin to pray and the whole Holy Ghost came down in the hull of that ship. Now it's a Presbyterian girl, but I read her testimony. She said, I spake in tongues all the way to Africa. And when she got there, she got off that ship and brought revival to Nigeria. One little woman, you know how it happened. She said, there was sin all around me, but I had somebody greater in inside of me it was the Holy Ghost hallelujah I'm as glad that same spirit can get inside of you and I in this hour amen I know we're living in a wicked world I really felt like encouraging somebody tonight we are living in perilous times we might as well be realistic we're in it there's no way out of it in the flesh but I love the promise of the word of God 
God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many believe tonight we can get in the spirit and that spirit can get in us and we can overcome by the power of the Holy Ghost. Why don't we lift our hands and thank God tonight. Come on, let's thank God for that power that is available in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said Bethlehem is God with us. Calvary is God for us. But Pentecost is God in us. For Jesus said in John 14 and 16, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And I'll paraphrase it a little bit. He said he dwelleth with you but he shall be in you. That's what God desires to get in us and he gets in us and we turn around and walk in the spirit and we pray in the spirit. I'm telling you tonight the only way out is to get in. How many say amen tonight? I want to look at this text for just a little while. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Here we meet a man who ought to inspire us, who are living at the end of time. His name was John, John the Revelator. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with uh, groundwork and background information. We're going to get right into point one tonight. Amen. But I, I do think it's noteworthy. The first four chapters of the book of Revelation, when you read Revelation 1, 2, 3, and 4, they are very easy to outline. You can outline it effortlessly and easily. In Revelation chapter 1, we find inspiration. Amen. Inspiration. Uh, when we see John living for God uh, and, and experience the Spirit of God on the Isle of Patmos in the middle of his trouble and trial. How many agree that ought to inspire us? That ought to inspire the church. So in Revelation 1, we've got inspiration. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, we get information. We read about those seven churches of Asia Minor and every one of them, they dealt with doctrinal battles. They dealt with difficult situations but Christ gave every one of them the remedy the recipe and he said to every one of them to, the, to him that overcometh hallelujah how many believe somebody's going to be an overcomer in this hour that we're living in and so in Revelation 1 there's inspiration Revelation 2 and 3 information and then in Revelation chapter 4 there's an invitation John said after this, after what? After the church age is over. He said, I looked and a door was open in heaven and a voice like the sound of a trumpet was talking. How many remember what he said? Come up hither. I don't know how everybody believes about the coming of the Lord and I didn't come to butt heads doctrinally but I believe that's the rapture right there. The sound of a trumpet. The church going up and leaving this world. I'm glad there's an invitation and I'm glad I got the information but right now tonight we need a little inspiration. We need that promise that the Spirit can come by. How many believe the Spirit of the Lord can quicken us and revive us in this place that we are living in? And so John ought to inspire us tonight. Amen. And here's what I want to preach to us simply. Amen. Living in a horrible environment, he had a heavenly experience. Amen. Living in an awful place. Brother Smith, he plugged in to an awesome power. And how many believe we have that same access? Amen. What do we call in this revival? Power surge. I'll tell you what I'd like to see the church of the living God do in an awful place we can get plugged in to an awesome power and we can have revival even on the Isle of Patmos. Amen? The only way out 
is to get in. Amen. I want to give you a couple truths real quickly. And we're going to get in this altar tonight in a little while. But notice with me, number one, the saint's plight. The saint's plight. Webster said that word plight means a dangerous predicament. An unfavorable state or circumstance to be in. A problem. Amen. How many will agree with me? That's what John was facing right here. And I want to remind you, I think we all know, but this was not some rank sinner. This was not some heathen that I'm talking about. This is John the Apostle, John the Revelator, the Beloved, uh, the one that wrote the Gospel of John, uh, the one that wrote 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, uh, the one, amen, remember what he called himself in the Gospel, that disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, I mean, remember where John was at the Last Supper. He wasn't distant from Christ. Uh, he was leaning on his breast. Uh, Amen. This was a man who was close uh, and committed and consecrated uh, to Christ. Uh, but what a lesson this is for us. Uh, I may realize that even saints uh, are going to face sorrowful situations. Come on now. Amen. Even the pure uh, are going to face a patmos in their life. Uh, and I felt a burden in prayer today uh, to encourage somebody. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, why me? Why this? Why am I stuck here? I, I want to remind you God has a plan even on Patmos. Are you hearing me tonight? God has a purpose even on Patmos. It could be when I come out of it, when you come out of it, we come out with a greater revelation. Amen. John come off Patmos, but he had a revelation that we're still reading about and preaching about. He saw Christ in a greater way. And how many believe if we hang on and trust God, there is a purpose even for the Patmos of life. I love that story about Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell, that great military and political leader in England, way back in one of the wars, I forget which one it was, but they were running low on currency. They were out of precious metal. You've read that. Hey, man, they, they needed to mint new coins, but they had no precious metal. And so Brother Farley, Brother uh, or Oliver Cromwell sent out his soldiers, and he said, go find any precious metal you can, gold, silver, copper, whatever, anything we can melt down. Uh, and they came back, and you remember what their report was? Uh, they said, all we can find is the saints. Uh, that's all we can find, the saints. Uh, and what, the, what he was referring to were those little idols. Amen. I better just be honest. The Catholic Church in England had set up, how many has ever seen those little saints they set up? Saint Pius and Saint whoever, Saint so and so, Saint Thomas. And they said, All we can find is the saints. And Cromwell's command was this He said, Go get them. Those saints have been standing around idle long enough. We're going to put them in the fire. We're going to melt them them down uh, and we're going to make something valuable out of them. Uh, I want to tell you tonight uh, how many know God puts his saints uh, in the fiery trial. Uh, he puts us in the furnace of affliction. Uh, why God? Uh, hey Amen. Job told me why. Uh, when he hath tried me uh, I shall come forth uh, as gold. Uh, how many want to be valuable to the kingdom of God? Uh, I said is there anybody in the house tonight uh, that says I want to be valuable. Uh, there is a purpose uh, even for the Patmos of life. Amen. How many believe we ought to just hang on and trust God that he knows what he's doing. Amen. Listen again to Revelation 1 and verse 9. I read it earlier but let this sink in and put yourself in his shoes. The writer said I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Now listen to what all he was in. In tribulation. And in the kingdom. And patient. Wait a minute. Is it possible that I'm in the kingdom, but I'm in tribulation at the same time? Is that possible? Yeah. And then he said, I was in the isle that is called 
Patmos. Now I think we all understand that this was not some tropical getaway that John was on. He wasn't on some Hawaiian island somewhere. Kick back. This was Alcatraz of his day. This was a prison for the worst of the worst. And John was probably walking around, Brother Moody. I kind of imagine in my mind's eye somebody saying, what are you in for? Are you a murderer? Hey man, did you to revolt against the government and the king? What are you in for? And John told us what he was in for. He said, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow. Hey man, how many? Hey man, all he had done wrong was preach the gospel. Hey man, and now he's on the Isle of Trial. Can I nickname Patmos that? Anybody been on a Patmos lately? You feel like you're all alone and you're on the Isle of Trial. I come to tell you, you're not going to be alone forever. The Spirit of the Lord knows where we're at and He knows how to come by and lift us up off that Isle of Trial. Amen? Let's just be honest though tonight. How many will admit with me this is the hardest part of our Christian life to deal with? I understand why I'm being chastised when I've sinned and disobeyed God and I haven't done His will. But the songwriter said it in our church hymnal, we wonder why the test when we try to do our best. Come on now. Hey man, whenever, when I'm living right and everything's going wrong, hey man, I'm testifying. I'm keeping my testimony. I haven't compromised the word of God. What am I doing here? Hey man, I, I, you remember the background of this? Historians say, without going real deep into it, that the emperor of Rome at this time was Domitian. Domitian. And he was a tyrant, ruthless. He hated Christians. He hated John and the church. And Domitian claimed, I am God incarnate. And he set his image up. And, or, or he came in person, either one. And the command was that everybody in the land bow down and worship him. And they say when John stood before that image, he turned and preached and said, Domitian is not Lord. Jesus Christ his Lord alone that's why he was on the Isle of Trial and I want to tell you the truth of the gospel tonight if we live for God sometimes we're going to feel like we're on an island hey man anybody ever been there at the public school at work I went to public school hey man I was the only Christian I knew of living the way we do hey man and we feel like we're on an island but I want to encourage you tonight it's not not time to compromise uh, the word of God. Uh, I don't want to lose my testimony uh, on the Isle of Trial. Uh, how many believe it's going to be worth it uh, to stay committed uh, even in times like this that we're living in? How many be honest with me? Can I preach just a few more minutes here? How many be honest and say, I felt like I'm on an island before trying to live this old time gospel way? Can I tell you a personal testimony, amen, and I'm not pinning any badges on me, there's times I've failed and I wish I'd have done better, but I remember one time when we got out of Bible school, amen, graduated, brother Pastor Jones and I in the same class and my wife, and I went home and I was working at a marketing firm in Cincinnati, Ohio area, and uh, one day, I'm telling you, you can be on the Isle of Trial just like that. And this is why we're going to need to be close enough that the Spirit of the Lord can come by. <laughs> hey, man, we don't know. And that one phone call, one situation, one accident, <laughs> and we're on the Isle of Trial. <laughs> and we need that lifting up in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, man, I walked into work one day. I wasn't looking for trouble, fresh out of Bible school. I didn't wake up going to the bar looking for temptation, but I was they're working and uh, our boss sent a message over the intercom or through email I forget how it was and he said everybody to the meeting room we're having a meeting there's about 250 people I worked on one level and they went up higher levels and uh, uh, literally and figuratively the guys at the top some of them I didn't even know never seen them hardly but we come in there 250 of us approximately in this meeting room and I'd started working there when I was 16 and I just kind of won favor with the owner 
and, and through Bible school and after Bible school worked uh, at that marketing firm. But he come in that day and he said, I've sold the company. He said, I sold it to Catalina Marketing in Tampa, Florida. And the good news is, we started at the bottom. We've made a lot of money. Everybody's going to keep their job. Everybody's getting a raise. And we're not working the rest of the day. We're having a celebration. <laughs> now, that sounds good. Amen. Until everybody, all of a sudden, these men, Brother Tim, come out. They were in tuxedos. And they come out. And we were all sitting at these tables. And here come the champagne glasses in front of everyone. And these guys come out. I mean men and women in tuxedos with a uh, uh, white towel and they started pouring wine and champagne uh, and they come in front of me and I didn't, I didn't grab a microphone and say let me preach a little holiness tonight. I didn't do that. Uh, hey man, I didn't try to be ugly. I just said, Brother Cruz, I said no, I don't need none of that. I'm alright. Uh, hey man, and they went on down and I'm talking about getting on an island. Are you with me tonight? Hello? And all of a sudden uh, a man jumped up Hey man, a guy next to me, and he said, Hey, Jerry's not going to celebrate with us today. Uh, Jerry's not going to drink. And every eye in that place looked at me. Hey Amen. 250 people. And here I was on the aisle of trial. Uh, and I'm telling you, you're going to keep your testimony, uh, or you're going to cower and compromise uh, and lose your connection uh, with the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, what are we going to do on that aisle? of trial and somebody finally said hey man one of the guys that knew me said he's a preacher hey man and boy it's like a, you talk about that what was that a Doberman pincher it's like a pack of them hey man here they come and somebody isn't it funny how they all know the Bible somebody said Jesus turned the water into wine there's nothing wrong with drinking he went to parties hey man somebody else said I'm a Christian and I drink are you saying I'm going to hell man is getting a is getting uh, tough on the aisle. Huh? Hey man, and somebody finally backed me in a corner uh, and they said, give us some Bible huh? against drinking. Where's the Bible say uh, that it's wrong to drink? Huh? And again, I'm not for being ugly, hey amen, but when they back you in a corner, hey, we ought to have an answer for every man uh, that asketh the reason of the hope. Huh? And I reached into Proverbs. Huh? I haven't always been so bold, uh, but I reached into Proverbs and said wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Hey man, reach over there to Ephesians. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. I'm as glad we can be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hey man, I, I might have ruined the party a little bit. You could hear a pin drop. But I tell you one thing. They probably laugh behind my back and said he's crazy but I did not lose my testimony on the aisle of trial I want to encourage every young lady, every young man, every mom and dad we can stand for God in an hour like this and we'll be rescued when it's all said and done, how many believe that tonight they put John in oil, that's what the church fathers said, Tertullian, other church historians said, how many has ever read that? They tried to boil John in oil. It's not in the Bible, but that's historian's record. But God preserved him. Amen. He wouldn't boil. Somebody said, you stand for God, you're going to get in hot water. I like how, I think it was G.K. Chesterton said, I don't mind hot water if it keeps me clean. Amen. Hey man, it washes the germs off. He got boiled with oil. But God kept him. And Domitian, as a result of that, hey man, put him out there in the middle the uh, Aegean Sea uh, on that Alcatraz Patmos. Uh, they say it was a salt mine. Uh, salt mines all over that aisle. And they'd beat those prisoners. Uh, they'd lash their back. Uh, and then they'd put them in the salt mine. Uh, how many's ever heard of rubbing salt in the wound? Uh, and man, it would sting. Uh, and I felt like somebody's here tonight. Uh, and you say it stings. Uh, I'm in the middle of the trial of my life. Uh, I don't think I can 
make it any farther. I come to tell you tonight, you don't have to die on the aisle of trial. Amen. The Lord isn't done writing the story yet. And if we hang on, it could be tonight. It could be Sunday on the Lord's day. How many believe the Spirit is going to come by and reward and revive the church that's faithful? One little nugget that I, God dealt with me that I love about John. It took him nine verses before he ever mentioned Patmos. Wow. I'm going to be honest with you. I would have said it in verse 1 probably. Amen. If we were writing this, come on now. Amen. Come on. Let's be honest. Verse 1. Help. I'm on Patmos. Amen. I'm suffering for the gospel. All I've done wrong is live right and stand for God. Now I don't understand what's going on. I need some prayer. But John never even mentioned Patmos till verse 9. What was John taken up with? Verse 1 through 8. He talks about Jesus. He said he washed us in his blood. He said behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. What is the secret for surviving our Patmos? We got to get our eyes back on the Lord. His goodness, his glory, his grace. How many want to talk of his wondrous doings? And before we know it, the spirit of the Lord is going to quicken us. Amen. I'm leaving you with this. I'm winding it down. The saint's plight, the Savior's provision. I'm sorry, the saint's plight, the Spirit's provision. The Spirit's, how how many know the Holy Ghost knows how to make an escape route for the church? How many's ever come to church and you were going through it and before you know it you were lost in the presence of the Lord, in the Spirit. And the problems of the day faded. Amen. All of a sudden the worries were gone. The burdens were lifted. Wouldn't you like to have an altar service like that tonight? Amen. Anybody need some burdens to be lifted? Some troubles to fade away? Uh, John said I was in the aisle called Patmos. Uh, but the next thing I know I was in the Spirit uh, on the Lord's day uh, from Patmos to Pentecost. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, if you've been enduring your Patmos, it's time to enjoy your Pentecost. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to get in the Spirit of the Lord. I read about the processionary caterpillar. Amen. Those insects, those caterpillars live up to their name. Amen. The processionary caterpillar. You can line up five or ten or however many you want and they'll hook up They'll connect and unite and they follow the one in front of them in a procession. Wherever that leader goes, the whole group goes. And uh, that French uh, scientist, Jean Henry Fabre, Jean Henry Fabre, conducted that test. Some of you have read that story. And he decided to get those processionary caterpillars and he put them on the rim of a bowl seven or eight or ten of them on the rim of a bowl and he put water and food in that bowl pine needles what they feed on what they love to eat and he just sat back and observed and they did their thing they united they connected and those processionary caterpillars began to walk around the rim of that bowl brother Smith day one day two day three day four they had to be getting hungry after a while day five day six day seven you know what happened on day seven they all died on day seven Uh, they starved to death no water no food Uh, and the sad fact of the matter was this Uh, they were inches away uh, from everything they needed Uh, but they were in such a rut of routine Uh, they were roaming around the rim uh, and nobody broke out uh, of the procession Uh, nobody broke out all one of them had to do was break out and get in Uh, and everything they needed was there and I got to thinking about that how many know if we're not careful that's what we do in the house of God I didn't come to amen rebuke anybody wonderful spirit here but how many know it is easy to roam around the rim of revival I said we come to the house of God I'm in my daily rut my routine got to get up and go to work and we come in we sing we pray we go to the altar for a few minutes 
and we go home and we roam around the rim of revival but we never really get in and get what we need. How many believe tonight it's time to break out of the rut and say I come to get in the spirit tonight on Thursday night. Why don't we stand and lift our hands right now and say God carry me away in the spirit and get me out of this situation that I cannot get out on my own. Come on, let's lift our hands and love him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, how many would like to stop roaming around the rim of revival and get in where the blessing of the Lord is. That maketh rich. Amen. John was in two locations at once. His physical address was Patmos, but his spiritual address, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. You know, we can say that. Can we be two places at once in this wicked world, in Lorraine, Ohio, amen, in the last days, but yet walking in the Spirit at the same time, kind of like a submarine. A submarine is in the ocean, They go down to the depths where men would be crushed and drowned. How do they survive? They're in the ocean, but they're in the submarine. Amen. In two places at once. And we are in this world, but we are not of this world. How many is glad we can walk in the Spirit? Amen. We can walk in the Spirit. Kind of like, I don't want to leave you standing long, but it's just come to me. Kind of like that old country preacher. Somebody came, some uh, educated big shot, come in and he said, you Pentecostals, you got, there's a contradiction. You talk about being filled with the Spirit, being baptized, the Spirit gets in you. And then you turn around and read verses about praying in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. Which is it? Do you get in the Spirit or does the Spirit get in you? It can't be both. I'm in the room, but the room's not in me. Which one is it? And the old country preacher, hey man, this guy had come to the parsonage to talk and he took the poker in the wintertime and went over and held it in the fireplace and let the guy talk and he pulled it out and that poker was red hot glowing. He said, touch it, grab it. No, no, I don't want to burn, I don't want to get burnt. He said, you know why? Since the poker has been in the fire, now the fire is in the poker. Amen. Amen. And how many know what, which one's true? Both is true. We come to church and we get in the spirit. Spirit, and then the Spirit gets in us, and we walk out of here, and we walk right, and we live right. Amen. Amen. The saints' plight, the Spirit's provision, the Savior's presence. Uh, Jesus showed up when John got in the Spirit. Jesus passed by, and he said, I turned. I heard a voice behind me. It wasn't some wimpy Savior. It wasn't, forgive me, it wasn't the artist's depiction uh, of a long-haired hippie Jesus. Uh, Look like he weighs a 110 pounds soaking wet and you could blow him over hey man with a feather no 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 he said I saw him he had eyes like fire feet like brass he's ready to put the enemy under his foot he's got a sword coming out of his mouth and his voice is like the sound of many waters how many is glad we got him on our side Jesus the living one that's got the keys Domitian died and a new emperor came to the throne and he said get John and bring him off Patmos. Is he the only apostle that died a natural death of old age? I believe so. Wasn't martyred. They couldn't boil him. I'm going to tell you you can't stop the church that's living in the Holy Ghost, walking in the Spirit. Come on tonight. Who would step out and say revive me when I walk in the midst of trouble? That's what the Uh, youth pastor said thou wilt revive me amen come on somebody say I'm in trouble but I'm in revival at the same time I'm in Patmos but I'm in the spirit that's how I can handle it the Holy Ghost is helping me to handle it amen come on let's seek him tonight let's ask God to revive us again Lord send the spirit of the Lord in a sweeping way 